morning. I'm just trying to be brief. So if I talk too fast, please give me. Uh, <coughs> I will try to give you, share with you why we think teacher literacy is important. A few examples of what we do, that the members do. So the example will be little just because of time, but doesn't, I don't think there is no commitment. And then what next? Some ideas for work to be done by the Commission, by the stakeholder, by the member states. Just a few words about the European Skill Association, who we are. Industry, you can see them, you can see who they are. Uh, okay, sorry. Okay, uh, the closure of the talk. So, who, who we are, what we do, you can see industrial members, then we spoke about the role of certification. So, we have industry and vendor network certification. So, you can prove what does it mean to be skilled. Then, we have uh, users. Chief Information Officer, which is a 500 European company under EuroCIO. Then practitioners, ICT practitioners, and the importance gained by school, with school net, 30 ministers. So we have a quite a interesting perspective and memberships. Here I give a sort of definition of who are the people concerned by digital literacy. People can, because of their gender, age, income, disability, or geographical location, do not have access to uh, internet. We don't touch upon here gender because of the parallel workshop. I try to give two definitions of digital literacy here. I will come back on definition later, but you can appreciate the, the difference between the first one, which was by a professor, and the second one by the Commission from 2004. Now, why digital literacy is important? Take the tree as your personal education development. The tree get is food, sustain and support from the roots. The more the roots are deeper, the better the tree can grow. So if you take the roots as a digital literacy, then the trunk goes up solid, you have digital competencies, skill for employability, and then all the branches could be the new skills coming out. We don't know how technology will evolve, we don't know what will be the skill of the future, so if you take the images that the, tree, the branches go up and down, you can think these are the future skills that we cannot foresee. But the branches go off if the roots are deep and solid. So what happens when the tree doesn't have good roots? That's it. You can take that as European innovation, European competitiveness, personal education, personal growth, but that's why we praise a lot the work done by the Commission on Digital Literacy, and I think the first systematic effort started with Riga in 2006, and I also know it's not easy because of matter of uh, subsidiarity. Now, here are a few examples of what ESA members do. So, for instance, the first one is about Cisco. I don't mention the numbers, you can read by yourself, but it's worth it to mention three kinds of initiatives. One done with prison inmates, so digital literacy will be with people which are normally excluded and try to give them another chance to rehabilitate in society. Special program with people with disability, with focus with people with extremely difficult with physically and mental handicaps. And then, uh, it's not mentioned there, but a lot of work is done in five countries on employability with uh, basically giving a chance to people to find a job and there is a 70% rate of success. This DL, we hear Damien uh, would like also to mention that they are doing a study which is very interesting on the cost of ignorance. How much does it cost for a company to hire a person who is not able to use technology in terms of training, in terms of time waste by his colleague because the person is always bothering the person next to him to have information. <laughs> and then, uh, as also Daniel mentioned, is the is supporting the big idea which is led by Schoolnet here, but the support of SDL in organizing this workshop was very important. European Schoolnet, just a few examples, yesterday Vice President Cruz stressed a lot the importance of safer internet. Schoolnet uh, is doing a lot there, they're doing a lot of, uh, there is a one quite interesting study funded by DG IMSO on the relation between students and technology, taking account also the context between teacher and class. There is also a program on, uh, I don't know if I can mention the partner, but is a technology provider on laptop in the class. So the, the idea is that any person receive a laptop in a, a student and they also do a lot of work, as mentioned before by Damien, is the importance of not only the fact to bring technology in the class, but to see how teacher can change a way of teaching and the program can be improved. 
gain quite quickly. We have also the European Alliance of Skills and Employability, created in 2006 with the presence of President Barroso. Uh, the idea again is to provide training to disadvantaged people just to increase the chance of uh, employability. They have an award in 2011, there will be three categories on health, volunteering and active aging. Microsoft has been already mentioned by Ian, the commitment of Microsoft with Telecenter. You can see some of the figures about the amount of money, but also interesting on kinds provided by Microsoft in Europe to NGOs. It's also interesting they're working on curricula online in 12 languages. So you, it doesn't mean that you need to be able or you're obliged to speak English. You can try, you can also do it in most of the country in your language. It's also a good example of our Microsoft IT Academy Online. Uh, at the moment, there is a strong focus in Spain. An example here is given from Spain about 160, uh, sorry, 300 institutions which are involved in Spain. Oral Academy, the best part, the more famous is their own ThinkQuest program, which has 300 students in Europe and 1,500 education involved. Now, that's very quickly what as a member do. We also work on the role of intermediaries, which are very important. And I know that James cares a lot about the role of intermediaries, how to train them, work with them. But also we are here to think about what next. So I've been reading a few papers to prepare my presentation and I was start to be a bit surprised because okay, digital literacy we know about it, with my main two other ones. We mentioned also digital competencies today. Ian Touchable also media literacy. So the ability to use technology to produce media. But uh, there was an interesting phrase about the use of information society technology underpin by basic skill in ICT. So basic skill in ICT is the same thing that digital literacy or not. Then, again, basic skill in ICT. Then we go to e-series, e-literacy. Is digital literacy or is different? Then I heard about e-competency, same things. It's the same like digital competence with e, e e-skills. E-skills, all of this, or is something new? And then, basic computer skills. So my plea to the commission services, I know that you work a lot together with digital education, digital enterprise, digital employment, digital IMSO. Please, try to find common definition that you have all across the commission to which stakeholder will adapt, but it's a bit of sometimes a jungle just to understand between each other what we're talking about. Now, the work should not be done only by the commission, of course. We're also here to stress our commitment and engagement. A part of the big idea is also to have a national coordination. So, why are we not use trying to com convince member states to use a structural fund to set up, I call it national skill association. Uh, Damien call it partnership at national level. So to have sure that there is a really lifelong learning approach from 5 to 95 or even longer if possible, where not program you've seen independently. So you have stakeholder working on digital literacy at the school level, people working at the employability level, the skills for innovation, different institutions at national level. So trying to coordinate this nationally. So that taking account is really a process which starts from 5 and ends when the person wants. And stakeholders are already working with regional and local authorities. Uh, the program, I know that most of them are national competencies, but I'm sure the moral suasion uh, given by structural funds, uh, the Commission can do some persuasion there. Now, the idea is that also we know that the Commission is working, but also we notice that there are different events, and I mean, one two days on digital literacy, there will be eSkills Week organized by DG Enterprise. Why not have any single event encompassing everything? So if you take the trees, basically from the root up to the branches, uh, so that you have all people speaking together, all the different stakeholders, and normally sometimes are with the same, you're sitting in the same room, and that also should be able to foster the cooperation between at least four DGs, I'm thinking again employment, but maybe I should also mention Rachel, because Rachel has the money and it doesn't harm. Uh, then, if my memory are not, I'm not wrong, this is also the moment when the European Parliament submitted to the Commission suggestion for preparatory actions. I know that e-learning programs started like that many years ago, e-democracy programs started like that many years ago. It would be very nice if there would be a preparatory action on e-skills. Again, not covering only one part of it, but involving three or four DGs. Uh, I know that it's not also prerogative of the Commission asking to the MEPs to put forward a uh, preparatory action, but we are, <coughs> you share our idea, from our side we can increase our pressure on MEP 
to take in account also because MEPs are, some of them are very interested to the topic. So, faster than this, I could.